Thousands of Muslims were systematically targeted and massacred with exceptional brutality. This helped the rise of the Butcher of Gujarat, the then Chief Minister of the State of Gujarat, the now Prime Minister of the country, Narendra Modi. The years following 2002, state organized political massacre of Muslims witnessed the land of Gandhi turn into the land of intolerance, hate, and violence. The systematic turnover and takeover happened while the civic society watched in deafening silence. Thousands of lives were systematically destroyed and they continue to be systematically destroyed to fuel the political ambition of one man. His thirst and lust for power did not quench then and will not be satiated till anyone who could potentially put this person on the dock who could question him and who could bring him to justice is not destroyed. For Narendra Modi, that person is my father, Mr. Sanjeev Bhatt, who has and who continues to, for the last 21 years, diligently fight to bring justice for the victims <laughs> who continuously has been fighting to bring justice for the victims of the Gujarat program at great personal and professional cost. What we saw since 2002 till present date, as Narendra Modi ended up growing in the political arena, as he became more and more powerful, the vindictive victimization to the family, to my father, also escalated. In 2002-2003, my father furnished information regarding the state's complicity in the 2002 pogrom. In 2009, he started deposing before the court-appointed committees and gave forward information, incriminating evidence, tying Narendra Modi directly to the orchestration of the 2002 riots, the assassination of Haren Pandya, who was then the Home Minister of the state of Gujarat, as well as numerous extrajudicial killings that happened in Gujarat in the name of protecting Narendra Modi at that point in time. All of the evidence was submitted in the Supreme Court in 2011 in a sworn affidavit. Evidence enough to prosecute this man for all of the heinous crimes that he's committed. But we live in an India, the new India, where rapists, genocide uh, orchestrators, hate mongerers, lynchers can walk scot-free, but where an honest and upright officer or an honest and upright individual will not get a fair day in court. We live in an India where despite of there being enough evidence to prosecute Narendra Modi for his role in the 2002 riots, the man not only walks scot-free but enjoys the highest position within the country. The judiciary, for the longest time people outside of the country have always believed that the Indian judiciary is a robust system, it is not. The Indian judiciary has been systematically subverted for the last few years now, top to bottom. The judiciary works at the behest of the political duo, Amit Shah and Narendra Modi, to ensure that A, Modi is exonerated of any crime that he has committed, and B, that any individual who has had the courage to stand up against this regime is witch-hunted, picked, and put behind bars to ensure that their voices are never heard. Systematically, there has been desecration of every constitutionally independent uh, bodies within the country. For the last few years, in 2011, when my father submitted the sworn affidavit in the Supreme Court of India, he was immediately suspended. When Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of India in 2014, my father was suspended from, my father was dismissed from duty. So if suspending him, dismissing him from duty, breaking down our house, the constant threat to life since 2002 till present date, all of bulldozing our house, bulldozing, um, our offices, if all of this was not enough in 2018 to ensure once and for all that the Gujarat chapter was shut and never opened in order to destroy the credibility of that one person, the sole surviving witness to the state's complicit role and action in the 2002 genocide, the Modi government picked up my father in the early morning of 5th September 2018 under the pretext of questioning him in a 30-year-old case, a case that had a a case which is nothing but a fanciful fabrication of fiction. And my father was convicted to life in imprisonment through a vitiated, a blatantly vitiated trial where we were not allowed to defend ourselves when his presence was not allowed. 
and he had, he was thrown in jail for life imprisonment for a crime he did not commit his only crime that he did not buckle under political pressure that he continued to and still continues to fight for justice for all of the victims of the 2002 riots <laughs> it has been four and a half years now and my father still languishes in jail four and a half years of us running from pillar to post going from court to court to get one fair day in court but in modi's india one fair day in court is not a luxury afforded to the honest and the upright. So 21 years on, while my father's fight for justice for the victims of the genocide continues, four and a half years on, our fight to bring justice for my father continues. We may be bloodied and we may be bruised, and this has been a very long drawn battle, a battle which has drawn blood at every step of the way, sacrifices that I have seen him made all of this life. We still fight, he still continues to fight fit. It is a long drawn uphill battle, but like he always says that we will resist, we will persevere and we will overcome and that he is certain. The battle is not finished yet and it won't finish to the perpetuators of watch to justice. Thank you.